soon as you start streaming, count to 10 and hit the video. The Bick No Racing Products Pro Late Model Series is on the air. Live from Lamont Land Speedway. Tonight's broadcast being brought to you in part by MDR Designs. For all your in-sim graphical needs, MDR is where you want to be. You can find them on their Facebook page. We can't do this broadcast without thanking our good friends over at Rival Power Coding. If you need something powder coated, Rivals, where you want to be. As a matter of fact, they uh, they can do the pieces to your sim rig. Rival powder coating loaded in St. Catharines, Ontario, Canada. And we need to welcome aboard Pat Riser, and not just another racing podcast. You can find that, of course, on iTunes and SoundCloud. And Toy Trapass will up in a booth with you tonight, joined with me by my partner in crime, Mr. Dylan Davidson. And we got to give a big welcome to Kevin Cunyu. Welcome, gentlemen. Hey, how you guys doing? So, uh, Kevin is our new producer tonight. Uh, bear with us. But, uh, you know, from what I've seen of Kevin's work so far, Kevin, it's good to have you aboard. And I know Dylan's going to be... Uh, Definitely happy that he's got a fellow Canadian in the booth with him tonight. Yeah, for sure. But Dylan, uh, I'm going to put you on the spot. Can you uh, tell us a little bit about Lima Land Speedway? Well, Lima Land Speedway is owned and operated by the University of Northern Ohio, which has a uh, lot of uh, things in NASCAR and in dirt racing. They have dipped their hands in just about every motorsport there is to teach their students about it and keep that sport alive. This quarter mile dirt track is home to the fastest racing in Ohio, hosting uh, late models and the UMC or uh, UMP modifieds. Tonight, we present you the BRP Late Model Series, brought to you by Ra Rival Power Coding, MDR Designs, and not just another racing podcast. Now, we've seen some really quick drivers here in the past couple of weeks. Who do you think is going to come out on top tonight? Well, I mean, it, it's kind of hard to, to bet against Tom Richards. Um, I mean, the, the guy has just been on a roll since we went to the late models uh, here in the BRP series. Um, but, you know, Nick Cooper, is, is you never count Nick out either. That is very true. Thomas Richard and Nick Cooper have been maybe starting a bit of a rivalry uh, because of the consistency of their finishes. And Travis Miller as well up there. We see them, those top three almost every night uh, up here with us at the end of the night talking about their first, second, and third uh, finish. Absolutely. And it's hard to count out Hunter uh, Hallberg. Um, you know, Hunter, if it hasn't been for the fact that he's been caught up in other people's dumpster fires, Hunter has had a strong car all season long. Now that is true. He has been a hard charger this entire season, and uh, we'll see what he can do tonight. This is one of those tracks that uh, you can roll the bottom, you can go up top. It's, it'll be good racing side-by-side side through these uh, 50 laps that we're going to be running tonight. Absolutely. is uh, currently sitting at pop, the top of the pile during the hot lap session. Nick Cooper with a 12.727, um, almost a full tenth to the good over Hunter. Uh, Travis Miller posting up a, a 12 8 1. So look for Hunter and, and Travis to, to really be dicing it out. Tom Richards a little late coming in. Uh, the track right now is uh, definitely gone slick already. So, uh, you know, it's, it's really anybody's game as to who, who can figure this thing out. 
Now, for those of you who have listened to the past, you might notice that my voice sounds a little different tonight. That's because I blew my vocal cords out Saturday night. Um, long story, don't ask. But uh, we're here tonight, and uh, Hot Lab Session uh, still underway right now. As you know, I'm, I'm looking right now, and already these guys are rim riding up against that wall. Yeah, for sure. That's going to be a big factor tonight. We see that cushion move up towards the wall. It seems to be the fast way around the track currently, but once that pushes up to the wall, it can get pretty dangerous up there. As we just saw uh, one driver up into the wall there. I'm not entirely sure who that was. Looks like it was uh, Joseph Bongiorno. Um We might see some guys roll down to the bottom, see if they can find that tack down there, and uh, we'll see some definite uh, position changes through the night if that becomes a factor. Oh, absolutely. On, a, on these tight quarter mile bull rings, you know, the slide job is going to be uh, the key factor as to whether or not you're going to be able to get that pass done. And, uh, you know, because you have to go where everybody's not. And chances are this is going to go one lane, uh, a one lane track real quick. That's for sure. Um, it's when it gets to the one lane, it comes down to who's going to make the first mistake. And uh, we're going to see a lot of tense drivers out here because of that. So we'll have to see who will crack under the pressure and uh, who will capitalize on that. Absolutely. As it, you know, it, it, it's, it's never easy to get around a quarter mile bull ring. But the thing is, you know, you, you've got to, you know, you've got to use your head. You've got to, maintain your your focus and it's real difficult to do to maintain your focus for what is going to be a uh a 40 lap race um you know a, a 40 40 lap no a 50 lap, lap race 50 lap race yeah 50 laps tonight 12 seconds a lap <clears throat> you're hitting a corner every six seconds and yeah that that's going to take, uh, uh, you know, a Herculean effort to maintain your focus and not put a wheel wrong for all 50 laps. Yeah. So, you know, the, and the, the thing is, is if you do put a wheel wrong, how much carnage is it going to uh, going to create? Exactly. And the thing with these tracks, uh, especially these bull rings where they get worn out fairly easy is the track becomes so dynamic through these 50 laps that, they're going to have to adapt to the changes of the track while maintaining that focus, while maintaining that inch away from the wall. It's going to be exciting to see how these guys fare. Absolutely. And uh, so uh, if we can get the boys in the truck to bring the ticker up, we could take a look at uh, what these guys are putting up so far. I have to say I'm pretty impressed with the fact that, you know, we're only – half a second between first and last place right now um actually we're less than half a second between first and, and last place as they're running right now a short field tonight but that's probably not a bad thing considering the tight confines here at lima land yeah for sure if you get too many cars out on this track it may become congested and it, it'll slow down the racing uh so with this smaller field, we're going to see a lot of tight and fast racing. No holdups or anything else like that. It's just going to be go, go, go the entire 50 laps. Now, something that's a little bit different than what we've seen so far at the tracks that we've been to, there's not a lot to designate where the infield starts and where the track ends. Um, if you look close and if we can get the guys in the truck to maybe uh, – go to one of the GoPros on one of the, like the, one of the left side fenders. Um, you can kind of see that there's, there's what looks like white donuts. Those are actually tractor tires half buried into the ground. Um, and you definitely do not want to hit those. Yeah. I've had a uh, experience in uh, real life with a sportsman hitting those tires can cost you the race. Even the tractor the, tires at Ransomville are filled with concrete, so that's even worse. Yeah, I've seen guys hit those, and the car itself will spin on a top, and the tire will not move. Uh, these ones being buried in the dirt, um, it almost creates a ramp. So if you're running that inside line, 
and you hit that, it's going to pop that left side of the car up and you're going to shoot across the track and it can cause some carnage, especially if there's a field right behind you. Yeah, I, I mean, basically, if you hit it, you're along for the ride and so is everybody behind you. Because um, it's just going to, it's like a slingshot. It's just going to shoot the car straight at the wall. Um, yeah. you, you'll have no steering, and the, about the only thing you can do is just jump on the binders and hope that nobody hits you. But yeah. you know that's that's kind of a you know Jesus take the wheel kind of moment because especially if you're running in a pack, if somebody does it, it's you're basically piecing twenty cars back on the trailer. Yeah. And we'll see if, uh, if that does become a fact. Or we see a lot of guys favoring the top side, though. So I'm not entirely sure if there's going to be guys running down on the bottom. Well, we're about to find out what's going to turn loose as qualifying, getting ready to get underway. And uh, we're waiting for the first car to hit the track. And so far, it looks like Tom Richard's going to be the first one to pull the trigger as uh, he's rolling out onto the racing surface right now. So is Dean Metzler. So... Um, you know, this, this is going to be interesting, uh, especially considering with, we're starting with a relatively cool racing surface, 78 degrees, 71 degree track temperature and 56% relative humidity, which means there's going to be a lot of moisture in the air. These guys are going to be making gobs of horsepower. And, uh, this track is already at 20% usage, which that might not seem like a lot to uh, the average fan, but you can already see where down low it's already slick. Yeah. And it's just going to get shinier and shinier as this race goes on. So time started to trickle in. Corby Daniels was at the top of the pile. Derek Moore throwing up a 12 7 8 to set provisional pole. Now that is impressive as he came in later on in the. Uh practice and only got to practice on a dry track absolutely as uh it looks like so derek moore Corey daniels nick cooper going third quick hunter Holberg going fourth quick with a 12 8 2 8 and uh let's see tom richards goes 12 9 that's uh surprising and not in a good way out of the driver of the 03 yeah, we'll see if he can uh, pull back from that. It may have just been some bad uh, luck out in the qualifying. Maybe just couldn't find the line, and he needs to be in a field. He is well. Uh, well he got out later on in the practice, and um, he was practicing on a dry, slick track. And then of course, the track reset, so he had a whole different surface to be running on. Um, so that may have been a factor in why he didn't qualify as well as uh, usual. Absolutely. We'll see, we'll see how he does in the heats here. As Travis Miller sets quick time with a 12-7-7. Wow. Seven, seven. That's impressive. 12 thousandths to the good for Miller. Um, really throwing down the gauntlet tonight going, hey, you guys might have me on the half miles, but the quarter miles, I own you. Yeah. Um, so that's an impressive time. Is uh, Nick Cooper and... Uh, Nick Cooper and Tom Richards still out on track, just turning the laps to make sure that they, they understand what the surface is going to do. Both of them were, were late into the hot lap session, so we're kind of playing around right now to see what this thing's going to do in the heat races. Uh, we are going to do carryover uh, from the heats. Yep. So qualifying coming to an end, it looks like we're going one heat race, 10 cars. <clears throat> And so we're going to have a uh, heads up start. Whoever wins this is going to be starting on the poll for the feature. Absolutely. Is uh, row number one of this thing is going to go to the 22 of Travis Miller. He's going to be joined on the front row with the 91 of Derek Moore. The 88 of Corn Beef himself, Mr. Corby Daniels, in the Bicknell house car. He's going to roll off in row number two with Mr. Nick Cooper. Hunter Holberg in the 99 is going to be joined with Joseph, Joseph Bonagorio in uh, row number three with row four going to Liam Daniels in the 72 and the 03 of your points leader, Mr. Tom Richards, Sebastian Labonte and Dean Metzler are going to start shotgun on the field. 10 cars scheduled to roll off in this one, eight laps to get it done. Who's your pick? 
Right now, uh, we saw Travis Miller being dominant in the uh, qualifying sessions. He's starting on the pole. He's going to have the trigger. He will he'll perform on these tracks. I mean, I think he's going to see some heat from uh, Nick Cooper, though, as well, because Nick Cooper is an amazing driver on any track, really. So I think we're going to see them battling it out for the uh, for the win tonight. Well, I got some bad news for the rest of the field. Derek Moore just had a throughput. His connection just dropped. So that's going to move Nick Cooper up to the outside of row number one. That is not what this entire field wanted to see. Yeah, and that is not what Travis wanted to see either. Miller starting on the inside now, and Nick Cooper with the favorable top line. It's going to be an interesting run here. Yeah, absolutely. As lights are out on the Chevy Silverado pace truck, the official pace truck of iRacing, field working its way through the 3 4 complex as we are getting ready to turn this one loose for heat, the heat race. Eight laps, 10 cars, and uh, they're going to start this field straight up of how you finish in this one. The pace truck is green, in. Green, green. green flag is out. We are underway. Nick Cooper with that run up to the top side, and he's going to make a wreck in the back. Hunter Holberg, I believe, went around as well as, um, not entirely sure who was all involved there. Dean Meisler and Hunter Holberg, both involved in that wreck in turn uh, one and two, and they're going to trail the field as Travis Miller works the inside. Nick Cooper to the outside. He's going to try to make it work as Travis Miller's cutting real close to those tires, but Nick Cooper will take the lead on this lap and down to the inside. He tries it again. As we are coming up on the halfway mark, as Cooper rim riding this time, Miller down on the low side, drag race. Cooper able to carry so much more momentum on that high side, making it work. As Corby Daniels fighting off uh, Liam Daniels and Tom Richards right now. Daniels trying what Cooper's trying and uh, just barely able to make it work as he is side by side with Liam Daniels. Liam seems to have that good run on the inside as he tries to or um corby's trying to run that outside it looks like he's just hopping the uh cushion and losing a little bit of momentum as now thomas richard works to the inside can he make it work for this fi final two laps and he gets the uh fourth position this one around i believe or it counted him as fifth so right now corby still got the position we see nick cooper take the win in this heat Travis Miller coming in in second, Liam Daniels in third, Corby Daniels in fourth, and uh, Thomas Richards rounding, rounding out in fifth for the top five. There it is. As uh, Joe, uh, I believe that was Sebastian Labonte that went for – no, it wasn't. It was – I think we see some retaliation here with uh, Sebastian Labonte and Liam Daniels. Yeah, the, uh, that's what I was – thinking as well yeah, there's a... uh, as Dean Metzler went for one hell of a ride there uh, as they took the white flag so what a, uh, a race we saw two lanes trying to form up but we noticed that that high line definitely able to carry more speed now the thing is you're going to have if you're going to make that pass stick taking that low lane you're going to have to really bomb it in there yeah uh, that's for sure you need to keep momentum with these cars because they do not have the engine to pull them out of the corner. That's why you're going to see a lot of guys running the top side, <laughs> keeping that engine wound up. Because if you go down to the inside, you're going to bog it down. It's just not going to come out of the corner as fast as it would up top. Yeah, absolutely. And that's that's the key with with any small block series is, as you can well attest to, uh, running the sportsman, because you guys run small blocks there too. Yeah. You have to keep a small block up in the rev range or yeah. else you're not going to get any horsepower out of it exactly the power band in these cars ends around 550 so 5500 and it only starts picking up drastically around 3 350 uh on the revs so you need to keep it within that range for it to pull out of the corner otherwise it's going to be a bit of a dog coming out of the corner absolutely and uh 
you know, let's let's talk about the the elephant in the room that you know we haven't really talked about a lot in the, in the recent weeks. iRacing made a uh, a big announcement a couple weeks ago when they said that uh, in the next update we will be getting the Weed Sport Speedway, which I know being a, as a dirt northeast uh, driver, you probably have been there in the sportsman division. I have, the- and uh, it's funny story. I, I've been there a couple times, but I've never gotten to compete in a feature because every time we'd either blow the engine or it would rain out (laughs) well here's the other good news is the same week that they made the announcement that they were releasing weedsport finally after two years of uh building the track they said that they were coming out with the northeast big block or modified and i am ecstatic absolutely uh, released now if you can kind of try to explain to the fans the difference between what these late models are and what because we have in iRacing right now we have the UMP IMCA style modified yeah and then they're coming out with another modified can you kind of explain the difference between that to the, between the two cars to the fans so there's a it's kind of like how you've explained it before, where it's a, it's a bastard child between a late model and a sprint car. Center steer, there's a, it's a little bit taller than the late models and empty modifieds, which allows for more roll. And these cars, you can throw them into the corner with these uh, larger tires as well. And it produces a lot of grip. And these the big blocks are the, uh, the real showstoppers with these guys, because it with the grip that it produces and the horsepower that the uh, big blocks produce as well, it makes for some extremely fast racing. Absolutely. And the, and the biggest difference being is there's no stock front clip, like on the uh, UMP and IMCA modified, you have to run a, a, a metric GM front clip on those cars. So from yeah. the firewall forward, it's basically what you would see on a Chevy Impala or a Ford Crown Victoria. Yeah. yeah. Uh, looks like Nick Cooper going to be taking an EOL. Um, so that's that's going to yeah. uh, that's going to move Liam Daniels up to the pole. No, I believe he did this uh, last week as well, didn't he? He did, and he made it work. But here we are on a quarter, tight quarter mile. This one's going to be difficult. So starting up on the point is going to be Liam Daniels and Travis Miller. Tom Richards and Corby Daniels are going to roll off in row number two. Row three is going to see Sebastian Labonte and Joseph Bonagorio. Hunter Albert and Dean Metzler are going to roll off in row number, where are we? Row number four. four yeah. And looks like row five bing, bing, bing. is going to go to Derek Moore and Tom Richards. As we are underway for 50 laps here at Lima Land. And give the first lap to Travis Miller. He got a great jump there. As they, he's got a pack of angry dogs behind him. Travis Miller is trying to make that outside line work, but as we see oh, contact on the back stretch, I believe that's uh, Corby Daniels that almost went around there. But Travis Miller is trying to make that outside work, and he is making it work so far. But right behind him, we see Thomas Richards also using that outside line and getting a bit of a run every lap. He's getting closer and closer. Liam Daniels, eight kind of different sideways. I don't know how he's hanging on to that 72. as He was just, he was pointed straight at the turn he just came out of uh, as he's trying to make that low line work, and it's not going to work for him. It's Tom Richards able to make that high side work with the momentum. Hunter Holberg is also looking in, trying to get that fourth position as uh, Corby Daniels is up on the top side. He's going to make his way to third almost, getting that run off the corner and just got a quarter panel on him. But that top side it is definitely faster than the inside as we've seen with uh, Liam Daniels moving down the field as he gets more sideways and more sideways on every entry. Yeah, that car is definitely not happy running as low as Liam was trying to put it. Uh, the high side seems to be the place where you're going to want to be right now as Travis Miller continues to show the way. Tom Richards up to second. Corby Daniels holding down a third-place position as he has a hungry Hunter Holberg uh, working on the backside of Liam Daniels as they battle it out for fourth. 
Oh, and Holberg into the wall. Holberg straightens it back out, and Nick Cooper making his way up, but not as quickly as we've seen before. He's only gotten up to the uh, seventh position, trying to make that bottom side work. Uh, he's weaving in and out of cars, but he just can't get that run that uh, the guys up front can without the traffic. And that's the problem with this tight confines of this bull ring here at Lama Land in Ohio. Um, there's not a lot of space to make make moves happen as Holberg and, er, and uh, Daniel still slugging it out for that fourth spot. It's Holberg back. into the wall again. Uh, Daniel's around. Dan yeah, he, and they're going to call the caution, and that's exactly what Nick Cooper wanted to see as we bunch the field together, and he is now taking on the, uh, I believe, fifth position. Nick Cooper started shotgun on the field, moved up to the number, he's on the number five spot already as we are 13 laps gone. Travis Miller continuing to show the way he's going to, Hunter Holberg going to have a shot at him now. And it's, uh, he was able to get by Tom Richards. Richards had trouble too. As you look at these cars right now, there I don't think there's a straight body panel on the right side of any car on track right now. They've definitely been beating and banging the uh, right side of the car off on the uh, outside wall, just trying to push that um, cushion. And it's like I said, it's going to be a factor because these guys, once they get in the groove, and if someone hits that wall and messes up, that's going to be the time to capitalize. And that's where you're going to see the most passes happening. Travis Miller starting on the inside, which is not the favorable line, but he's going to have the uh, trigger on this restart as the pace truck pulls off into the infield. Travis Miller waiting and gets the great, jump. Great. He's going to make it to the outside line and have a two car lengths on uh, Hunter Holberg. Is there three wide behind him per second? It's Holberg, Richards, and Cooper slugging it out as they haul it off into turn number three. Cooper on the way low line, not going to be the fast way around. Give that uh, position to Richards that time by. Holberg still trying to hang on on the top side. And Richards slips up in the middle. Holberg still on that high line rim riding it as... Holberg for second that time by Travis Miller's looking in his rear view mirror, seeing all this battling, going, "Yep, go ahead, guys. I'm just going to walk away from you." <laughs> Nick Cooper, we see him weaving into the inside, outside. He tries both ways. Now he's into third. Big slide job up, contact, <laughs> and he's Hunter Holberg into the wall now. And that's going to give Nick Cooper the second position, and he's going to start tracking down Travis Miller now as. Um, Hunter Holberg and uh, Thomas Richard battle it out for third. Absolutely. And I can guarantee you right now there's a lot of curse words coming out of Holberg, uh, out of Miller's mouth as he sees what's going on in his rearview mirror. Cooper has clear track, and he's going to hunt him down as he just closed up about five car lengths. Slide job Slide coming job. through three and four. Miller with a cut under. And give that lap to Miller. By a full tenth of the second, he was able to, to keep the momentum up as Cooper had, he had the slide job in place but just could not keep the momentum as we're working, coming up on the halfway point as Cooper tries another slide job, drag race down the back stretch. Cooper going to throw another slide job and Miller's going to cross him up neck and neck down to the uh, start finish line. That's going to be a lap for Miller as he tries to the inside and throws a slider. But Cooper now has the run to the inside. Another bomb thrown to the top, and Miller's going to dive underneath him, neck and neck, and back down. Miller for that lap again. Nick Cooper up to the top side. He's going to try to get to the rear end of Travis Miller, and he's going to throw another slide job. They're just throwing bombs at each other. Absolutely. What, anything you can do, I can do better, is they just trading slide jobs in each end of the track. The only problem is Miller's doing it, or Miller's doing it in one and two. Whereas Cooper's trying it in three and four, and it's not working for him. Let's give another lap to Travis Miller as we are just past halfway. Nick Cooper's got that run on the inside. What he needs to do is just stop throwing it in so hard and just try to stay in front of Miller, or take that line away. But in this, in the moment when you're driving these cars, it seems like it's the right thing to do when uh, we're kind of backseat drivers up on the tower looking down. But we see that it's not working for him. 
I wonder if he's going to change up his uh, tactics here. Well, from the looks of it, yes. There, Miller changed it up for him as Miller took the low line going through three and four. Give that lap to Nick Cooper as he was able to keep it wound up on that on that top side. Miller got to be kicking himself, realizing that, yeah, the low line is definitely not the way around. It's, the low line is already whooped. Exactly, and I think that's going to tell him to move up a little bit as he gets a nice run, and but he just taps up on the wall. But he keeps on trying that inside line. He might see some grip there or see some potential if that outside line gets worn down anymore. Well, he's going to need a, a few more laps to get that, that outside line worn down as Cooper continues to show the way. Miller holding down second. But how about that battle for third between Richards and Hulberg right now as they are just side by side every lap. Richards able to eke out just a little bit of a lead that time as Hulberg almost ate the wall coming through one and two. Richards looking uh, pretty good up on the top side as he gains uh, about two car lengths. But do not count uh, Hunter Holberg out because he has, he's got him in his sights right now. As you can see, he's hard charging to the outside, trying to get that run, get back on the bumper of uh, Thomas Richard in that 03 car. Meanwhile, back up in front, Nick Cooper with three quarters of a second lead over Travis Miller. Makes that a full second now as Cooper got to the clean air, and he is just walking away right now. Travis Miller got to be kicking himself for trying that low line when he did. Not working out for him as Thomas Richards run to the high line now, and so is Holberg. Corby Daniels able to, to rebound a little bit as he's holding down some strong number, uh, number five slot. He's got a two-second lead over Sebastian Labonte. Corby Daniels is in that kind of a awkward situation where you're the guys in front of you are too far to catch and the guy behind you can't catch you because he's too far back. He's kind of out in dead air right now, but um, we'll see if there's a caution or anything that can bring this field together and maybe he can pick up a couple more spots. Well, we are closing in on 10 to go here as uh, Cooper is starting to work lap 40 right now continues to show the way a second and a half to the good over Tom Richard or sorry Travis Miller Miller another second and a half over Thomas Richard and then the closest battle on track right now is the battle between Richards and Holbert for that final podium spot Nick Cooper has got that top side down packed as he gets this good run every lap just gaining more and more on those lap cars which I'm not sure if they're going to be a factor or not we got uh, eight laps to go here and I do believe he's going to run into them um, in the way that you got to get by these guys. But I'm not sure if it's going to slow him down. He has been on fire all night. Well, the, the, the amount of time that he's, he's taken, I don't know if he's going to catch Labonte as we are coming up on seven to go this time across the stripe. Nick Cooper continuing to show the way two seconds to the good now over Travis Miller. Miller doing everything he can, trying to make that low line work to try to take the short way around. And all that's really doing right now, though, is it is letting Tom Richards reel him in for seconds. So we might have business picking up here before it's too much longer. Looks like Nick Cooper is caught up to lap traffic as uh, he's right on the tail of Dean Meisler, who gets sideways oh. since contact. Dean is up in the wall as uh, Nick Cooper pulls away. And Nick's got to be white knuckling it right now as he uh, just experienced what could have been the end of his race. Absolutely. As he definitely caught a race car to the face as uh, not where he thought Sebastian was going to go. Sebastian trying to get out of his way and unfortunately they had a meeting of the minds coming through or coming out of two. Cooper though continuing to show the way a second and a quarter of the lead as Popsicle sticks in the air this time across the stripe. Nick Cooper has got two more laps to go. One half mile. Can Travis Miller catch him? Uh, not sure, but business is definitely picking up. As white flag in the air, Nick Cooper coming around to take it. Tom Richards and Hunter Holberg slugging it out for that final podium spot, though. As Richards taking the low line and Holberg trying to make that middle lane work. But all he's doing is just kicking up dust to a completely loose race car. As here comes Cooper across the line to take the win. Cooper for the win, Miller for second, and Tom Richards hanging on for third. Hunter Horrible coming in uh, 
fourth there. Corby Daniels in uh, rounding up the top five. We saw quite the race tonight. Um, Nick Cooper just on fire these past couple of uh, broadcasts here. He's taken an EOL a couple times and just makes it work every time. I don't know if it's a stroke of luck with these cautions or if he's just that good. Uh, I think it's mostly he's that good. He definitely has something that the rest of these guys don't have right now. As we are going to bring in our third place finisher tonight. Uh, and Dylan, I believe you've got uh, I believe you got Thomas Richards with you right now. Hey, Tom, uh, gotcha. Yes. So we saw one. Uh... One wild race tonight. Um, track was drying out through the bottom side, and we saw that it didn't work that well. But the top side was uh, seemed to be the favorable line. Was it a concern of yours running that extreme top um, of perhaps getting into the wall, slowing you down? Yeah, sometimes uh, because of the bumps uh, on the track, it was uh, pretty rough, and sometimes we had to. Uh, Hit the wall and uh, and uh, go on the high line to uh, stay on the pace of uh, Nick Cooper, but but uh, at the end it was uh, the low line that is was uh, better uh, for me. Well, it was fantastic racing. Uh, is there uh, anyone that you'd like to thank for the uh, tonight's race? Yes, of course. Uh, I want to thank uh, Richard Rose uh, Racing Team to uh, support me every week and uh, to watch the live uh, on Facebook or Twitch. And uh, thank you. All right. Uh, any words, Tony? No, just uh, it was fun to watch you battle it out for for that final podium spot. Um, you know how how beat up was this track at the, at the end of the race? Um, in the middle of the track, it was pretty bumpy, and uh, the the eye line it was a little bit uh, rough too because uh, it was near the the wall. But um, I think the low line was uh, a little bit uh, less bumpy than than it was in the middle and the eye line. All right, fair enough. Uh, congratulations on the podium, sir. Uh, Thanks. Bon nuit, mon ami. Merci beaucoup. That was our third place finisher, Mr. Thomas Richards, joining us now. Uh, Dylan, I believe you've got our second place finisher, Mr. Travis Miller, with you. You got me, Travis? Yeah, I can hear you. So one hell of a race tonight, uh, starting up on the uh, outside pole. You pulled away, got the uh, inside line um, on the restarts and good jumps but uh when you saw nick cooper in your rear view what was going through your mind oh well you know whenever you see him he um he's 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 quick so you know he's going to try and get around you as fast as possible and he pulled up beside me there in the bottom so i just wanted to kind of keep pace and we were throwing some sliders back and forth and and then i slipped up in one corner i'm pretty sure it was uh, one or two and i got tight on exit and he was able to pull away, so I couldn't get to the bottom of him, and then he set sail, and that was it. Well, fantastic racing. Is there anyone that you'd like to thank tonight? Oh, I just got to thank uh, Gaston's Auto, Precision Auto Clinic, uh, Colson Phelps Designs for the cars, and um, you guys for putting this on. It's always great. Awesome. Uh, Tony, uh, any words for Travis? Uh, just Travis, I know it wasn't the finish you were hoping for, but you guys put on one hell of a show tonight, sir, and I can't thank you enough for doing so. <laughs> yeah, thanks. I appreciate it. It's uh, it's always fun throwing around uh, sliders with Nick, and hopefully we can keep doing it. All right, sir. We'll see you next week. All right. Thanks, guys. And now, uh, Dylan, I believe you've got the man of the hour. Uh, and if we can get uh, – I believe we've got a, a camera, the reverse chase camera, uh, so we can take a look at uh, Nick celebrate there in victory lane. Uh Dylan, I believe you got Nick Cooper with him right now. Nick, you got me? Yes, sir. Fantastic racing out there. You came all the way from the back of the field, took that EOL penalty, and uh, made your way up. 
we saw you battling with just about every driver out there to get to that front. Um, but that one wreck in uh, turn one, lap one, what was going through your mind trying to avoid that? Um, basically just that, uh, just trying to get around it. It's early in the race. So, I mean, you got a lot of time, you know, got to push yourself or anything like that. So, uh, I knew it was just, you know, back off a little bit, let them get gathered up and go back at it again. Now for a couple laps there, you were battling with Travis Miller, uh, throwing sliders, just straight bombs for at least 10 laps. Um, did you have any worry that maybe he had you and couldn't get around him or were you pretty confident that you could make your way around him? Uh, at that time, I was just having a lot of fun racing with Travis like that. Um, on here, it's it's pretty much uh, non-existent sometimes to be able to pass um, on some of the tracks. But um, this track in particular, it's a driver's track. So, uh, I mean, if you mess up or anything like that, it's, uh, it could be your race. So uh, I was having a blast racing with him like that. It was fun. Well, it was awesome to watch. Uh, it was just super fun for I'm, – I'm sure it was super fun for you guys, and it was – Great fun for us up in the booth watching you guys. Uh, Tony, you got any words for uh, Nick? Just an impressive drive, Nick. We, it was the second week in a row that we've seen you uh, take the EOL penalty at the beginning of the race and uh, basically do the bounty move where uh, I know, you know, in the Northeast Dirt, uh, dirt Car Series, if you qualify in the pole and then uh, start shotgun on the field, take the EOL uh, you know, it, it means a little more when you get the win that way. Yeah. And it definitely, uh, it definitely helps you, uh, learn how you can work traffic and, uh, you know, mind your patience a little bit. And, you know, some people probably benefit off of that on here. They, uh, get impatient sometimes and, you know, just put themselves in bad positions. And I, I kind of do this to help me with the real car because I know we're struggling this year a little bit here and there was set up at Canandaigua, but, um, it definitely does help me in that aspect to to pick and choose my battles. Absolutely. I mean, we saw you struggling just a little bit before that caution came out because the field was so tightly packed and there was just battling going on. I mean, the guys were just throwing bombs at each other for the first half of the race. And uh, you had to been licking your chops when that caution came out. Yeah, it definitely was. That was just a, that was early in the race and I was kind of paying my time a little bit and, just trying to pick my cars off one at a time and not put myself in a bad spot. Well, Nick, uh, you know, I definitely got to say you guys put on one hell of a show tonight. You guys, every time we get a chance to broadcast the Bicknell Racing Products Pro Late Model Series, uh, you know, you guys just put on a tremendous show every week. And I cannot thank you, uh, every driver out there enough. Um, is there anybody you want to thank before we let you go? Uh, I just want to thank you guys in the booth. Uh, D1RT, obviously the team I'm on and I racing. Um, Firehouse Subs, uh, Bicknell, of course, Corby, everybody that's a part of this league. Um, Big Shocks, um, obviously uh, all my sponsors in real life. I uh, can't thank them enough and everybody that helps me out. All right, Nick, congratulations on another win here uh, on the Tuesday night. Uh, I racing Pro Late Model Series brought to you by Bicknell Racing Products. Rival Power Coating, uh, MDR Designs, and uh, not just another racing podcast with Pat Riser. Dylan, that was just an amazing show we saw. I, I, I'm blown away every time I see these guys do what they do. Yeah, these guys are... Uh, it you would think they're professional the way they drive these cars, especially on these, uh, smaller tracks, these bull rings, as Nick said, these tracks are driver's tracks and, uh, these guys just make it work every time. Um, always putting on a fantastic show. Um, we'll see how it goes next week. Uh, the late models seem to be the way to go, uh, with the sprint cars. We've had some issues with, you know, uh, recurring cautions and everything else, but these late models, they put on a great show with these guys. Um, so I'm excited to see uh, how next week turns out. And um, like I said, I just I love these small tracks too, the driver's tracks. You go to Eldora and stuff, it's more hold your foot to the floor and make your way around. But when you get to, you know, Lima Land and uh, USA and 
like Lernerville, those tracks put on a hell of a show every time. Absolutely. And, you know, you just hit the nail right on the head. Um, I was talking with Pete Britton, who those of you who aren't familiar with uh, Northeastern Modified Racing, Pete Britton uh, was born and raised in Australia, Queensland. And uh, over there, sprint car racing is king. I mean, by, hands down, it's 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 more of a religion over there than it is in, let's say, uh, the Midwest with the Indiana, Illinois, Ohio area, where you go there, it's sprint cars and late models. You go over to, to Australia, it's sprint cars and midgets. Yes, they do have the big block modifieds. And I asked Pete, I said, how come you started driving modifieds when, when sprint car racing is so huge over there? He said, because I wanted to have it put back in my hands. I wanted it to be a driver's race, not, okay, can my team, you know, get my tires siped right so that, you know, I don't burn it off. Um, and and it, it, those words have really kind of, I, I understand those words now more than I did when I was working with, with Pete, where there's no real arrow aid i mean you don't realize just how much of a crutch and and I, I i use that term loosely and i and go ahead and get your hate mail coming now folks i really don't care but you don't realize how much of a crutch that top wing can be not is can be when you're talking about these cars basically have the same power plant that's in a 360 sprint car yeah. Yes, these are carbureted. Those are fuel injected. They're on methanol. These are on racing gas, but it's still the same basic idea. Um, but you don't realize just how important that wing can be until you get into something like this, where you don't have, uh, you know, 5,000 pounds of downforce pushing down on the car as you go through the corner. Yeah, that's why you see so many of these guys go for wild rides in the uh, uh, with the wingless sprints with like the four tens, the power width to weight ratio is insane, almost equal to a formula one car. And um, without that downforce, you see the front tires pick up all the time, the rear tires, you need the foot to stop that from spinning. Those cars are probably one of the hard. And as you said prior to, let the hate mail flow in, but those cars are most likely the hardest cars to drive. In oh, absolutely. All of racing. I, I've, I've tried, well, it's the non-wing sprint car that iRacing has, or the, as they refer to it as a non-wing, because if you talk to a real sprint car fan, there's sprint cars and then there's wing sprint cars. There's no such thing as a non-wing sprint car. Yeah. It's either a sprint car or a wing sprint car. So the sprint cars that don't have top wings and I dare say the uh, the midget series, those are the two most difficult series to really get around a racetrack. I mean, at least with a with a dirt late model, you have a little more wheelbase to balance the car out yeah. and you have that rear spoiler to help a little bit. And but it doesn't help to, anywhere near as much as that top wing can. Yeah, we also have to take in consideration that a late model is twenty four thousand uh, pounds or twenty four hundred. Twenty four hundred pounds, yeah. Yeah, twenty four hundred pounds. While a wingless sprint is twelve hundred. Twelve hundred, right? And with the four ten in it, it makes more horsepower than the super late models. It, Absolutely. It, yeah. Like I said, with the power to weight ratio, it's almost equivalent to a Formula One car, except it's on dirt. And half the time, it's little, you know, quarter, uh, quarter mile ovals. You're it, talking with a 410 sprint car engine, you're talking somewhere in the neighborhood of 900 to 980 horsepower. Yeah. Yeah. Um, now they do have 360. Uh, engines for the sprint cars so that they do run without the top wings um but if you really want a driving challenge the 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 sprint cars without the wings with a 410 engine 
uh, I've seen races in iRacing with those guys, and I, I just, I'm amazed every time I see it. Um, you know, it's difficult enough to drive a 410 sprint car with a top wing. Yeah. Uh, um, it's, it's sure, you know, you, you better have, you better pay your, your angel on your shoulder a, a good chunk of the, the purse money if you can survive a, a wingless uh, 410 sprint race. But, uh, you know, moving forward, I'm I, personally, I'm looking forward to when they bring out the big block dirt modifieds because it will be the the largest displacement dirt engine iRacing has ever put on a track. Yeah. And uh, the one thing I'm excited to see is uh, with the guys in the BRP series, a lot of them are drivers of the dirt car modifieds, the uh, Northeastern modifieds, if you will. So for these guys to be, uh, it's almost like they're, you know, in their native uh, environment, they, uh, they they know how these cars operate. They know how they handle. So it's going to make for some great racing with the uh, drivers of these cars in real life. Absolutely. And I have also heard rumors that when that car is released, we might be seeing some fairly large names uh, joining us here on Tuesday nights on ESPN as we bring you the Bicknell Racing Products uh, iRacing series. Um, you know, and I, I've I've heard mention of so far two uh, Super Dirt Week champions that may or may not be uh, throwing their hat in the ring on Tuesday nights with us. Yeah, and that's I'm super excited to see how this is all going to come together, and I'm sure we're going to pick up a lot more guys because uh, you know a lot of the guys are familiar with the BRP name and. Um, as the series grows larger and larger, where you know gets the name out, we're gonna see a lot more guys come in for these uh these races, and we'll have a full field every week. I'm sure of it. Oh, absolutely. Um, we, we're probably gonna start seeing consolation races before too much longer when that happens. But uh, I believe that's gonna about do it for us tonight. I uh, got to give a, another shout out. Uh, congratulations, to Nick Cooper coming home with the victory. Travis Miller coming home in second. Tom Richards rounding out your podium. Hunter Holberg round uh, coming home in fourth. Corby Daniels in fifth. Sebastian Labonte last car on the lead lap coming home in sixth. Dean Metzler putting down the hauler in seventh. Liam Daniels, Joseph uh, Bonagorio. And uh, Derek Moore all putting it on the hall early, routing out your field tonight. But uh, be sure to join us here tomorrow night as Frank Marchese and I are going to – actually, Kevin, Frank, and myself are going to hop on red-eye flights tonight as we are going to head across the big pond. And we are going to be at Spa Franco Champs with the Top Fuel Racing IndyCar Series tomorrow night. Uh, be sure to join us for that one as my uh, partner in crime, Mr. Sam Cooper Bennett, is going to take on Spa in an IndyCar. So for absolutely for Dillian Daniels, for uh, Kevin Cunha, uh, this is Tony Trapasso saying uh, we'll see you in the next one, folks. <laughs>